In this video, we'll go over five common no calculator questions that show up on the GED math test. So when you're multiplying with decimals, you can always start on the bottom right. Five times two, 10, carry the one. Five times three, 15, plus one, 16. When you move to the second number, then you're gonna start with the zero on the second line. Then you could do four times two, eight, and four times three, 12. We're gonna add these. Start on the right side. So zero, six and eight, 14, carry the one. One plus one plus two, four, and drop down the one. At the end is when you're gonna deal with the decimals. You just count how many you have. You've got one there, one there for a total of two. Count in two from right to left, and boom, right there. So final answer, 14.4. Okay, let's do another one. You draw a number line, you plot points here and here. What is the distance between these? Whenever they ask a number line problem, always start by sketching one out. And then let's label negative 3.6 somewhere about there, 2.8 somewhere about there. We wanna find the distance or how many units away they are but one way to do it is you could always split it up at zero. And distance is always positive. So what is this distance? Well, it's got to be positive 3.6. And then from zero to 2.8, that distance, that just stays positive 2.8. And we're going to add these together. So you'll stack the decimals, and then 6 and 8, 14, carry the 1. 1 plus 3, 4 plus 2, 6. Drop the decimal down, and you got it. 6.4, that is the distance. Okay, let's look at another one. What is the greatest common factor of 48 and 60? Now, a factor is a number that multiplies to both of these, but I know multiplication is not a lot of people's jam, so we're going to do it with addition. Now, we want to find the greatest, so if it's a multiple choice, go ahead and grab the greatest one there. Now we want to add and see if we can get to both 48 and to 60. Let's do it. But 24 times 2, that's nice, because that'll get us to 48. But if we try 24 three times, that'll get us to 72. So 24, it can't add to 60, so that's not our answer there. Okay, let's try it with some different values. Let's do 12. Now, 12 added four times, that'll get us to 48. 12 added five times, that'll actually get us to 60. In other words, it's a factor of both of them because it can add to both of them. And then this is the greatest number out of the options given. So therefore, that's the greatest common factor, 12. Okay, the next one, what value of x makes this expression undefined? There's two times when something's undefined. When you divide by zero, or when you take the square root of a negative. When you do these with the calculator, it's going to give you an error. Now this one doesn't have a square root, so you can ignore that. But it could divide by zero if the bottom becomes zero. So the question is, which value of x here? Could you plug in right there and make the bottom zero? If you see it, awesome. If not, we'll just go through and show what A looks like. If you change X to zero there and there, it's going to turn into this. But then simplifying, we get two over negative three. But there's no issue there because we're not dividing by zero. So that one's good. So it's not A. Okay, let's plug in three for X, option B. And we get this. So we get 5 over 0. Let's write that. But there's our issue. Whenever the bottom of a fraction is 0, you're dividing by 0. That's undefined. So that's our answer there. Now, if you're good with that, let's go ahead and reset. Let's try one other type here. Let's say what value of x makes the square root undefined. Well, we know it's a square root. Anything that's negative is going to make it undefined. So out of our options here, negative 2, that's the one that's going to mess it up. And that'll make it undefined. 
And those are the main two types of problems there. So just keep an eye out for either of those situations there. And one last one. Between which pair of decimals should 5 eighths be placed on a number line? In other words, we want to convert a fraction to a decimal. The way you could always do that is with long division. Now, the way you could say this is 5 divided by 8. So 8 on the outside, 5 on the inside. You have eight eggs, you want to put them into five spots, but it's too much, so it's not going to work, so it'll go zero times. Then you'll multiply the top number by the side number and put it underneath and subtract. But that just gets us back to five. But no worries, if you start off this way, just go ahead and make five, 5.0. 5 and then you put your decimal straight up, but you could bring down a zero and keep going here. How many times can eight go into 50? Six, because six times eight, pretty close, 48. Subtracting those, we get two. But you can always, after a decimal, keep adding another zero. So bringing that down, we get 20. Eight into 20, that'll go twice. Two times eight, 16. Now we could keep going with this, but actually, we're done because 0 0.62, that's gonna fit between 0 0.6, 0 0.7 on the number line. So that's our answer there. And you could also do other types of problems like this. For instance, line these up from smallest to biggest. Just convert any fraction to a decimal with long division. And then you could see, oh yeah, that's the same thing as 0 0.62 and that's the smallest, that's the biggest, then you can line them up that way. Okay, I hope uh, you got some good stuff out of this. If you wanted some more practice, I have a video on distance on a number line and no calculator decimals, so feel free to check those out if you want some more practice. Let me know what questions and issues you run into. Good luck, you got these. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.